So this fall, we're going to talk a lot about what? Practice. Because I think people practice incorrectly. Today we're going to talk about the feelings you get when you practice. So welcome back to the channel. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hit everyone solid. I never miss hit one. Never miss hit. Never. Never miss hit one with my driver. That stance gives you a real good foundation. Don't Does it ever, boy? Oh, you better believe it. Hey, Mo, is your, is your, is your uh, stance from this decade wider for your driver? Yeah. Feel the ball so good. I'm not using one white. There's a little hole here. I used to wear it in my here. With with my I swing and turn her. Never over my left. So you know what good players do is they've learned, maybe it's through trial and error, maybe it's through just the time they spend with the game or having time in general to, pl to play, is they learn how to use their practice time effectively when they're on the range and at various places on the course. Today I want to talk about things that happen when I practice. And one of the things that happens so often to me is that I get into a rhythm, I get into a feeling, and that is the time when I tend to get the most out of my practice. One of the things, and, and in the last video, remember what we talked about, and if you haven't seen it, go back and review. I talked about the feeling I get with the club face orienting with the trail foot. I know that seems a little bit weird, but in my, in my ideal practice, as I'm rotating, the club face squares with the inside of the trail foot. I like that feeling. That's a feeling I get. That's a feeling that helps me deliver the club effectively into the back of the ball. So, hey, go give it a shot and practice that. Today, I want to talk about another very important set of feelings I get. What do I mean by set? It's what I call brace and brace. Now, there's a little backstory to this that I want to explain to you. Bracing the body. 
one of the things, and I don't know, you can surf a lot of the instructors that you're going to find on YouTube, and I'm sure you've visited some of their channels. They're going to talk about swing mechanics, positions, grip, all the stuff we all talk about, right? But one of the things that I think is missing so often from what's being taught is if you're going to talk about the movement of the body, backswing, downswing, release, finish, all those things, you must also talk about how to stop the movement or what I call brace or create the braking system of the golf swing. Check out some of the videos throughout my channel. I discuss this quite a bit. But one of the feelings that I, that I focus on, if I had triggers, when I'm practicing, not necessarily on the course because you know you're training here to take it over there, but one of the things that I focus on pretty heavily is how what part of my body is staying in a somewhat still braced position as I rotate and hit the golf ball. So I call it brace and brace. And what I mean by that, and it's pretty simple actually, is in the backswing, I'm bracing against the inside of the trail leg. So I'm bracing there. There is, there is a brace, this, this is stopping so that I can rotate this part. You're not seeing this occur. You're not seeing this slide. You're seeing a brace, see that? It's bracing that knee on the inside of that foot. There's a bracing occurring there so I can then deliver my lower body in the transition. So there's a bracing in the backswing. I feel that. When I hit, I'm going to hit this shot with the seven iron here, and when I hit this, the seven iron, I can feel my, my body being stopped there on the inside of that trail foot. So I feel that. I can feel that as I go back, this is stopping me, okay? That to me is important because not only is it creating a, a stopped trail side, it's allowing this side of your body, the lead side, to do what it needs to do. It's, it's allowing your upper body to do what it needs to do. And then that brace is allowing for that initiation in the downswing. Okay, so that's the brace of the backswing. Brace and brace. So the brace in the downswing is, is similar. It's the brace of the lead leg. Now, it's, it's stabilizing the lead knee. And you're going to see me talk about this a lot because I don't believe that if you, if you do not stabilize the lead knee correctly, right, and we talked about even a couple videos ago, that you can never deliver the club effectively if this is not stopped. If this is moving backwards, if this keeps moving forward, if it's moving around too much, you, never, you can never orient the upper body and deliver the club correctly. So, we, we're braced in the backswing, now let's brace the downswing. So watch this. So now that I've braced against that trail leg and I've initiated this motion here, this knee goes towards that toe and it stops. It braces for what? For this delivery of the club to go through. So it's bracing for my upper body to go through. So I brace there, I brace there, and it allows me to deliver the upper body, the arms, and the hands in the club. So let me show you that now as I swing through. So now you have the bracing of the backswing, the transition into the brace lead knee, and then the delivery of the club. And you know what, it's a really nice thing to feel rhythm too, is brace and brace. So brace, brace. And look at that lead knee, braced, see that? Brace and brace. And it's important because it's allowing, when I stop this side, it allows this to go. When I stop that side, it's allowing that to go. So it's allowing the upper body to orient itself correctly while it's rotating. If you mess up the lower body, I see this all the time, by the way. If you're messing up the lower body, starting at the feet, knees, and then the hips, this orientation cannot ever be correct. Everything becomes kind of a compensation. So here we go again. Bracing against trail leg here, and then bracing against lead knee there. And what happens is it, it creates a great direction for my upper body to produce the right amount of motion and the around the rotation. So it's not over movement. This is what the braking system, the bracing here and the bracing here allow for what I call the limitations of the swing. Limitations allow for the body to move efficiently and correctly every time you do it. Hope you enjoyed this content. By the way, stay tuned because we're going to talk a lot more about different types of practice, guess what, even in a couple of months, we're going to get Dr. Rob Neal with Golf Biodynamics to help us with the biomechanics of the swing. Don't forget, if you like this channel, subscribe, 
hit the bell icon, give me a thumbs up.